Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to introduce you to my 2003 Lexus GS300. I recently picked it up with under 92,000 miles on the odometer and let me tell you, it is a gem. Stick around as we explore some of the features, performance and the overall driving experience after about a thousand miles. But before we do that, let me tell you why I opted for a second generation Lexus GS300. If this is your first time here, you should know that up until recently, I was driving a 2007 Acura TSX and I was enamored with that vehicle. It served the purpose for about two years and a lot of miles and I did a ton of upgrades to make it look and drive the way it did. And then after two years, I decided to part ways with it for two main reasons. Number one, it needed a paint job and a quality paint job nowadays runs you for over $5,000 and I just didn't want to spend that type of money on a vehicle like that. And number two, it was a front wheel drive and there's nothing I could do to fix that. And as frivolous as these two reasons may sound to you, they mean something to me. I also have very limited space for extra vehicles. And lately I've been trying to experience some of the vehicles that I could never afford when I was younger. And I always liked the GS, especially the one from after the refresh. And as searching for options on Auto Trader, I ran into this beauty and it was just inevitable. Low miles for the year, pristine condition. So in my head, I figured sell my 2007 Acura TSX and using those funds along with a few more thousands and I could just get this beauty that needs nothing aesthetically and that I can just drive and take over the minimal maintenance that a vintage Lexus needs to stay on the road. This is, by the way, my fourth Lexus, my second one used. I think that the second generation GS is very elegant with sleek lines and subtle chrome accents. If you notice, there's very little chrome throughout the body of this vehicle. And the chrome that it has is not that shiny chrome, like let's say from a Cadillac of those years. It's minimal, but it's very, very subtle. And I know that you try looking at these wheels that kind of stick out like a sore thumb right now. Let me show you a little clip of the vehicle with the wheels it had when I bought it. And I'm not gonna claim that this is refined as a 5 Series from that era because at that time, the 5 Series was still running on the 839 platform, but I argue that this Lexus should be cheaper to own than a BMW because at the end of the day, this is just a Toyota in a tuxedo. And I was never a fan of the E-Class from that era because it had a lot of reliability issues, but the GS was rare, sold in smaller numbers, and it was a Lexus, and it also had the last inline six ever offered on the GS. It was also very expensive to own especially for me back then with an MSRP of around $40,000 for the base model, which adjusted to inflation today will be like $64,000 in today's money. But this car is very well appointed, but I was unable to find enough information regarding packages and individual options. So I do not know exactly specifically how much this vehicle was, but I do know that it's not the top of the line, but I'm glad because I wouldn't have liked to have things like an archaic navigation system like the one found on my 2007 Acura TSX that was useless. So I'm glad that I'm not stuck with the top of the line version, but at that, I do miss the fact that I don't have HIDs anymore. These are halogens, but you take the good with the bad. Oh well. And I opted for a second generation GS because I never liked the first generation or the third generation. And I do love the fourth generation, but I just can't afford it. Have you noticed? Uh, came out in 2013 and you're still paying $15,000 or more to get a, a decent chest uh, 350 from 2013 and on. And not to mention that was, was the last year, 2021. Those go for a lot of money still. The color is called Millennium Silver Metallic. It's silver with some champagne or green undertones. It's kind of vanilla, but classy. And as you can see, the paint looks very good for being 21 years old. I'm not sure if they did touch-ups on this paint, but it looks very, very good. And you can tell that it was always garaged. Sorry guys, I had to turn the vehicle around for better lighting because we're gonna work our way to the interior. But now that I'm looking at it, I think that it exhibits a disproportionately large passenger compartment in a short hood, and as I mentioned, an even shorter trunk. I believe that the smaller sibling, the IS300, has better proportion, and in my opinion, it looks a lot better. And you will also notice a very conservative dash to axle ratio there, so you don't get the sexy proportions of some of the European rivals with the longer hood. The front end is very unique with these high beams that moonlight as daytime running lights that are totally or completely detached from the headlights. And I think that's pretty cool because it looks very Japanese along with the 
very small grill. Later, this grill and the GS went all the way down and big, and I like this conservative look a lot. And then this is the bumper cover, and notice it's, it's all one piece all the way down to this area where there's more vents, and then these fog lights that sit almost flush with the bumper for a very, very conservative look that I really like. And no cladding or fake vents. And the rear end is very clean with split lights that drive with the theme of the front end. And at the bottom, you will also see no cladding like you see in most modern vehicles and a very subtle dual exhaust. So now let's work our way to the interior of the vehicle. And first, let me show you. To do that, you have this key fob with everything integrated. So it's got the functions for the lock. And then if you keep this one pressed, you get the panic. And then this is the unlock. If you hit it twice, you unlock all the doors. And then this is just for the trunk. And what I notice is that you can only open this trunk either with the key or with the remote, but it doesn't have a button to open the trunk here, which is kind of weird. I keep looking for it. So yeah, it doesn't have it. And I like the fact that the emblems are blacked out. And I think this is the first year that it came stock like that, if I'm not mistaken. But of, of course, some of you are experts in these cars and you're gonna correct me in all the discrepancies of information that I give you. Another feature that this key fob has is when you keep the uh, unlock button pressed, it will open the windows. My Acura used to do that too. So I think that's pretty cool. And then let's work our way into the interior of the vehicle. I wanna talk about it briefly. And this is where the magic starts, I believe, with the overall condition of this interior. It's just so gorgeous. I was blown away the first time I got in this vehicle when I was test driving it. We already talked about the, uh, the key, but once you insert it, then you have this telescopic steering wheel. This car came standard with many considered luxury features of its time, but only a few have withstood the test of time in relevance. One of them being the dual zone climate control. By the way, the AC blows super cold, which is nice in the California desert. A power tilting sunroof. And just one touch. Pretty cool, right? Then it has memory sitting. And then the seats are 10-way power adjustable with lumbar support. And I hope this video gives justice to this pristine interior. And then it has the auto and mirror there. And also all the windows are one touch. Pretty cool, right? I love the super soft sitting areas of this vehicle. The quality of the leather, just, just don't make them like this anymore. Now vehicles have become so sporty oriented. So you get like just extra bolstering for a vehicle that you're just gonna drive to the grocery store or to the nearby town. These are not race vehicles. So I don't know what's the obsession with hard seats of modern vehicles. So I really love these super soft leather seats. Just that, like I said, they just don't make them like this anymore. And they're heated, but not ventilated. And you don't get features like thigh extension, like in some other cars, but they have proven themselves to be very comfortable in my first 10 days and 1,000 miles of ownership. I drove this car back from Palmdale where I bought it, which is about three and a half hour drive. And it's very, very comfortable. This is um, some old school, shiny <laughs> wood, not my favorite, but I mean, all these cars came with them. And then there's a lot of parts sharing with Toyota products. So this reminds me of Camry products of that era. Um, so it's a combination of a very well-built vehicle with tons of parts sharing from Toyota. My dad had a 2000 Toyota Tundra and it just reminds me of that, it even smells the same. I mean, at the end of the day, they still a Toyota Aristo in other markets. And uh, like I said, lots of parts sharing going on in the instrument panel, the center console, and uh, the steering column with this, this, this feel and sound very cheap but overall this is a very well constructed vehicle i would have preferred a black interior of course but you know it's hard to complain about the condition of this gray interior but like i said earlier <laughs> dark gray wheels with the silver body and then this different shades of gray just make it a 50 shades of gray kind of car and by the way all the controls still work so that's pretty pretty good 
Look how clean this is. The seat's all the way to the back, so my knees are a little cramped, but you know, I'm, I don't plan to have a lot of people back here. But again, look at this leather, so clean. So I'll give you better images of this interior. And one thing that you're gonna notice is, so this is the elbow rest, and look at these minute cup holders. Same with the cup holders of the front passengers. They're just so small and shallow, almost unusable for today's standards, as well as the door pockets. They're not that wide, so this is just an old car, you know, even the center console right here, kind of shallow. The interior material choices, they're just okay. They're not great. It's just injected molding, so it feels very sturdy, very durable. Even notice the, uh, the steering wheel, how it doesn't have any controls here. Like I, even Ford was doing mounted uh, steering wheel mounted controls on their vehicles way before this one, but this one didn't have it. What it does have, it does have the controls for the transmission. So both of the ones that are exposed are down. And then back here, you have the ability to shift up once you put this transmission to the left for manual. And uh, let me show you the, the engine real quick. Look up my improvised hood stand right here. I found it in my friend's house. Look at this engine. And one thing that I like is that you can still see things, you know, power steering reservoir, the manifold right there. Um, the intake, the battery, the, the, this is the exhaust manifold. Um, and all the parts that you can still have access. Look, you still have room to work in a vehicle, just old school radiator. So I'm sure that in the next few months, I'm gonna incur in some repairs because at the 100,000 mile mark, you know, parts like the peripherals of the engine start failing and that's okay because I have a lot of room to work on it myself. It handles like a boat, I'll be honest with you. This is not a BMW experience. This is closer to a Cadillac or a Mercedes perhaps uh, experience from those years because the vehicle is very floaty. Um, the suspension is tuned for comfort and that's exactly what I like this vehicle. This is not the main reason why I bought it, but it was one of the reasons. I wanted something semi-premium, comfortable, quiet, and this vehicle is that. Remember that at the end of the day, still Toyota and Toyotas and Lexus are known to be boring and inspiring vehicles most in most of their models um, and this is one of them I, I really like it I longest trip ever was bringing it back from Palmdale it was about a three hour drive and I enjoyed it but it did have some issues and um, I addressed them within the first 10 days of my ownership so I've incurred some expenses and we'll talk about them in a future video because I want to keep these uh, videos short but um, going over to handling, um, it's just a, a nice plush ride. Forget the notion of the GS, what is it, Grand Sport? What is it, Stand Sport? Um, it's just a nice ride. The road noise of this vehicle is kept to a minimum, considering that it's a 21-year-old vehicle. I do spot a little bit of wind noise coming from up here, the big pillar. Come on, guys, it's 21-year-old vehicle with uh, dried out, gaskets and seals so I expect that but nothing major it is it is a lot quieter than my prior Acura TSX um, so I enjoy driving it every day to work uh, so far it's been pretty good and I I'm happy to inform that changing the, the wheels to 18 inch wheels with a wider uh, footprint and a shorter profile didn't sacrifice the quality of the ride I'm surprised actually they're not necessarily louder I do feel a little bit of the road a little bit more just because the sidewall is a lot harder even when I was installing these tires. They're Firestone something so I'm going to put the name at the bottom of the screen and they're really good tires. I like them. I bought them at Costco but Costco wouldn't install them for me. They said that um, because they're not the OEM wheel um, they're not going to install them on my vehicle and if they did they were going to avoid all the warranties and I had an appointment for the following week so I just decided to take him to a mom and pop's uh, tire shop and they installed them for me for like 120 and unfortunately I did void the life uh, what is the lifetime balancing <clears throat> and uh, road hazard uh, warranty but oh well it is what it is um, I just didn't want to wait another week for them to tell me that they possibly will just still void all the warranty so I paid like what was it like 120 to get him uh, balanced and installed not bad 
and I'm so far I'm liking the forged wheels and as I said earlier in the video I'm not sure about the lack of contrast between the color of the the body paint and the wheels it's just too much gray going on with this vehicle but maybe it's a matter of getting used to it as well as the height of the car I want to lower it a little bit not for sportiness I just that gap bothers me a lot looks uh, very utilitarian the side profile of this vehicle reminds me of Altimas and Maximas of this era. Even this instrument panel reminds me of all Maximas because remember this vehicle was conceived in the early 90s. So whatever was hot in the early 90s, they just threw in this vehicle. And uh, so this, bash, and this dashboard reminds me of my brother's 1991 uh, Nissan Maxima. That one had white dials. This is more like a back low instrument panel that is uh, very similar to what came in the IS300 same era. Something that I wanted to mention is that the horsepower of this vehicle is not a lot. The torque is about 230 and I think the horsepower is like 225. So along with the five speed transmission doesn't make it an agile experience at all. Um, think uh, that in the last, what, 21 years, transmissions have come a long way. So now a vehicle like this will probably have like an eight, nine, 10 speed transmission. So these gears are very long in between. So you always feel that you're in the wrong gear. And then even when you're coasting, maybe at seven, what is it, at 70 miles an hour, it's about 2,800 RPM. But once you start going 75 and even some places where the speed limit is 80, you start going way above at 3,000. So it doesn't feel like the vehicle is coasting. So it's in need of that sixth gear that I think it came with the, the third generation. I think starting with the third generation, it went to a six speed transmission which is needed for something like this. Sure, um, I'm guessing that a lot of you guys that have experience with this vehicle, uh, you're gonna tell me that this uh, platform has a lot of potential, but in a stock form, it's not great. But it's enough for me. So I don't wanna tell you that this vehicle is the best at everything because it's not, but it's the vehicle that I wanna drive for the next few thousand miles. I think that is it for today. I don't wanna run the risk of running out of battery. So I'm gonna leave it at this. In a future video, I'll give you a, a full breakdown of what I paid for the vehicle, where I bought it, who I bought it from, and uh, all the expenses that I have already incurred only 10 days into my ownership. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing for more related content. My name is Juan Carlos, and I'll see you next time.